Bob Barton's connection to high school football in Connecticut started in the late 1950s. He recorded scores of games each year and shared his knowledge for some aspect of the selection process for more than half of the New Haven Register's first 87 All-State teams. Bob died January 14th of this past year. We dedicate this year's team in his honor. When you talk about number one St. Joe's, you talk about their defense. And when you talk about their defense, Mike Morrissey's name is the first one that comes to mind. The senior defensive lineman was a terror for opposing offenses all season. He had eight sacks to go along with 80 tackles, 17 of them coming from behind the line of scrimmage, and he was tied for the state lead with 20 quarterback hurries. Morrissey was the leader, heart, and soul of the Hogs defense that allowed just 78 points this year which was good for six points a game, and the Hogs recorded five shutouts. With his stats and leadership, Morrissey has been named the New Haven Register's State Player of the Year. Morrissey leaves St. Joe's with his name in the record book as the all-time sacks leader for the Hogs and helped the Hogs win three straight state titles. Bob Pattinson is a Newtown guy through and through. He played for the program, and was an assistant coach before taking over the program three seasons ago as its head coach. Over that time, he's led the Nighthawks to a 31-4 record and finally led the program over the hump, winning a state title for the first time since 1992. Pattinson's Nighthawk team went 13-0 this year, beating Darianne in the Class L state title game on the final play of the game. And for that, he has been named the New Haven Register All-State Coach of the Year. Introducing the quarterback for the 88th New Haven Register All-State First Team, Hands, Phoenix Billings. Whether it was with his arm or his legs, Billings was a force to be reckoned with on the field. As a senior, he threw for 1,822 yards and 28 touchdowns while only throwing four interceptions. On the ground, he added 504 more yards and 10 touchdowns, helping the Tigers to a 12-1 record and a spot in the Class L State Championship game for the third season in a row. Billings finishes his high school career with 74 passing touchdowns, 31 rushing, and a 37-2 record to go along with two state championship titles. He will go on to play baseball for Jim Penders at the University of Connecticut. Hand quarterback, Phoenix. Billings. Leading the way on the ground is Sheen running back Terrence Bogan. After a crazy junior season, Bogan followed up his senior year with the same gaudy numbers. He rushed for over 2,200 yards and 29 touchdowns this season. And he saved his best for last when he rushed for 195 yards and two touchdowns to help lead the Titans to their first state championship since 1985. Bogan has left his mark on the Titans program. He finishes with over 5,700 yards and 77 touchdowns for his career. He is also the reigning outdoor New England 100-meter state champion and is almost always the lead in the school play. When you talk about the best running backs in the state, it's hard not to start with hands Colin McCabe. The former rugby player turned to football before high school. And even though he switched sports, he continued to run through defenders. He rushed for 1,467 yards and 20 touchdowns this season, scoring in all but one game that he played in this season. The senior even played a linebacker on the Tigers' vaulted defense. In two seasons at running back, McCabe rushed for 53 touchdowns and over 2,800 yards. Over the past three seasons, he helped Hand reach the Class L title every year, winning back-to-back -back titles the previous two seasons. There aren't many big-time players like St. Joseph running back Jaden Sheardon. The senior had himself a season to remember. He rushed for 2,061 yards and 34 touchdowns with 661 of those yards and 11 of those rushing touchdowns coming in the playoffs alone. He added three receiving touchdowns and one kickoff return for a score while helping the Hogs go 13-0 to win the Class L state title and finish as number one team in the state for the first time since 1982. 
Sheardon's career is a rarity. How many running backs can say they started all four years in high school and played in four state championships in that time? Well, Sheardon can. He helped the Hogs win three straight titles in Class S, M, and L to end his career. He finishes his four years at St. Joe's with 107 total touchdowns, with 94 of them coming on the ground, along with 5,529 yards. Bursting on the scene late last season, Greenwich's A.J. Barber solidified himself as one of the top playmakers in the state this season. The wideout caught 42 passes for 745 yards and 15 touchdowns. Barber specialized with highlight catches and was really effective when he had the ball in his hands. He averaged 17.7 yards a catch and caught three touchdowns on three separate occasions this season. Barber led the Greenwich Cardinals to a 9-2 record and a spot in the class double L playoffs. This is just another step for Barber, who will be a senior next season and will be able to build on his already 25 career touchdown catches. Standing at 6 foot 5 and 215 pounds, it is impossible to miss Hans Ethan Haberman. Hand quarterback Phoenix Billings rarely did as Haberman became his favorite target this season, catching 42 passes for 912 yards and 13 touchdowns. Haberman stepped up this season after Hand graduated a majority of their skills players from last year's team. The senior nearly doubled his career totals from this season alone. And due to injuries to the Tigers, Haberman was thrust into a defensive role, making two key interceptions this season. With Haberman's help, Hand went 12-1 and and returned to the Class L State Championship game for the third season in a row, winning the first two. Standing at 6 foot 3 and 260 pounds, Cheshire's Will Bergen made a difference on the offensive line this season for the Rams. With him leading the way, the Rams rushed for over 180 yards a game and 32 touchdowns this year as the Rams advanced to the postseason for the first time since 2010. Bergen also made himself known on the defensive line as well. He made 60 tackles, 10 of them for a loss, and recorded four sacks. There weren't many players in the state who meant as much to their team, like Simsbury's Tommy Guilfoyle. The senior shined on both sides of the ball, leading the offensive line that helped the Trojans offense score 27 and a half points per game. And on defense, he led the way at linebacker, making 161 tackles, 19 for a loss, and recorded three sacks and two interceptions. All of this helped the Trojans return to the postseason for the first time since 2009 and win the program's first ever playoff game. If you want to succeed, you run behind Matt Gulbin. And that's exactly what Wilton did this year. Behind Gulbin, the Warriors ran for 1,285 yards and threw for another 2,192 yards as the Warriors went back to the postseason for the first time since 1995. He also chipped in on defense and made 31 tackles. Eight of them were for a loss, and he recorded one sack. He even got involved behind the line of scrimmage, scoring a pair of one-yard touchdown runs. Harding's Troy Rainey was a problem to try and get past this season in the SEC. Playing on both sides of the ball, Rainey anchored the offensive line that allowed the Presidents to rush for 1,482 yards and throw for another 1,622 yards. Defensively, he made 63 tackles, 14 came for a loss, and he had five sacks. He also forced five fumbles. Rainey will continue his career at Rutgers University for Greg Schiano. An intimidating presence at 6'6 six six and 300 pounds, Maloney's Trevor Santiago was the last remaining of the Spartans' wanted line of Ogres. He anchored the Spartans' line that helped the team rush for over 2,300 yards and 29 touchdowns, and a spot in the Class L semifinals for the second straight year. He performed double duty making 57 tackles, 8 for a loss, and 5 sacks while recovering 2 fumbles. Santiago helped the Spartans to a Class L state championship game appearance in 2018. With one of the strongest legs in the state, St. Joseph's Austin Joes led his booming kicks through the talking. Senior kicked 
67 touchbacks and had 5,771 kickoff yards, which was 10th in the nation. He made 83 extra points, a school record, and kicked four field goals, including the go-ahead 38-yarder in the Class L state title game. He also led the state with 95 points. He even chipped in on offense catching 13 passes for 187 yards and three touchdowns. Was there anything Bloomfield's Anthony Simpson couldn't do this season? No, seriously. The senior rushed for 1,242 yards and 24 touchdowns. He caught 75 passes for 1,249 yards and 19 touchdowns and finished the season with 2,756 all-purpose yards, and 45 touchdowns. And it wasn't like he was getting a ton of rushing attempts or receptions a game either. He had more than 10 carries twice this season and had 10 catches in a game just twice. He rushed for 11.8 yards a carry and had 16.7 yards a catch. In all but one game this season, Simpson scored less than two touchdowns. For good measure, he also made 10 interceptions this season. Simpson led the Warhawks back to the Class S state title game for the second straight season, winning the title a year ago. Bloomfield's Anthony Simpson. Hands Ben Corniello has been a staple in the hand defense for the past three seasons, and his senior year did not disappoint. Corniello was a constant in opponents' backfields all year, leading a defense that allowed seven or less points in nine of their games this year, along with four shutouts. He made 61 tackles, 14 of them were for a loss, and he recorded six sacks while recovering two fumbles. Corniello finished his career with 21 sacks and 41 career tackles for a loss, while helping the Tigers reach three straight Class L championship games, and winning two of them. Corniello will continue his football career at Columbia University. Standing at 6 foot 5 and 230 pounds, Dan Barry's jaw joiner struck fear into every opponent the Hatters faced this year, and his numbers backed it up. The senior lineman made 13 sacks this year, two came in a near upset of Darianne, he had two against Fairfield Ludlow, and three against West Hill. Though he broke on the scene as a junior, Joyner made his presence felt in the FCAC, recording 24 sacks in the last two years, helping revitalize the Hatter program. Joyner will continue his career rowing the boat for Coach P.J. Fleck at the University of Minnesota. If you were trying to score on Newtown this season, you'd have to get past James Knox first. Teams rarely could as the senior defensive lineman was a force up front. He led a Nighthawks defense that shut out opponents six times this season and allowed just seven points in the playoffs en route to the Class Double L State Championship, the first in program history since 1992. Knox registered 17 tackles for a loss to go with his 55 tackles and eight and a half sacks. He also recovered five fumbles. He will continue his football career at Columbia University. Southington's Billy Carr is a dude. The senior linebacker was all over the field each game and made his impression felt every time he made a tackle, and he made a lot of them. Carr had 121 tackles, 23 tackles for a loss, and recorded 11 sacks for the Blue Knights who reached the Class Double L semifinals. He also forced two fumbles, recovered five more, and even took one back for a touchdown. Carr finishes his career with 238 tackles and 17 sacks. The St. Joseph defense was loaded with great talent that flew around the field all season long. But no one flew around quite like Cole Da Silva. The senior linebacker made 94 tackles and added 8 sacks for the Hogs defense that dominated opponents every week. He recorded 10 tackles in 3 separate games, including against Hand in the Class L state title game. De Silva also spent a ton of time in the backfield, recording eight tackles for a loss and tying the state with 20 quarterback hurries. Over his career, De Silva helped the Hogs win three straight state titles. If offenses were able to get through Newtown's defensive line, they had to deal with linebacker Jared Dunn. 
The engine that made the Nighthawks defense go was on every Friday night. The senior made 11 sacks to go along with his 94 tackles and 23 tackles for a loss while leading Newtown to its first state title since 1992. And it was in the Class L title game when Dunn tried the best. He made 10 tackles, had one sack, an interception, a fumble recovery, and came up with a huge stop on fourth down to give the Nighthawks the ball back with the chance to win the game. And they did. He also scored five touchdowns on the offensive side of the ball, three on the ground, and two in the air. Darianne Sam Wilson did a little bit of everything for the Blue Wave defense this season. He made tackles, forced turnovers, and he made game-changing plays. No plays were bigger than the pick six and the long touchdown run he had in the final three minutes of the game in Darian's win over Greenwich in the Class L quarterfinals. This season, Wilson recorded 93 tackles, made five interceptions, three of which he returned for a touchdown, and had 10 tackles for a loss. Over his career, he finished with 183 tackles, and he will continue his career at Middlebury College. Name it, and Sheehan's Jordan Davis could not only do it, but he could beat you with it. Defensively, he had 49 tackles and two interceptions, and he took both back for touchdowns. On the offensive side of the ball, he rushed for 18 touchdowns to go along with 827 rushing yards and caught 13 more touchdowns on 42 catches. He also returned a punt for a touchdown. Three of those receiving touchdowns and one of those rushing touchdowns came in the Titans' Class S state championship win over Bloomfield, the first in program history since 1985. Davis finished the season with 34 total touchdowns and 56 touchdowns for his career. When you hear of Weston's James Getz, you think quarterback, and that would make sense. He threw for 1,000 yards and 14 touchdowns, and added 645 rushing yards and seven more touchdowns this season for the Trojans. But on the defensive side of the ball, he was just as dangerous. Getz made four interceptions, batted four more passes away. Despite missing some time this season, Getz still left his mark on the Trojans and helped lead them to the Class M state title, the first state championship in program history. Weathersfield's Connor Pace start on both sides of the field for the Eagles this season. He made four interceptions and returned one for a touchdown while making 29 tackles. Offensively, he caught 43 passes for 903 yards and 11 touchdowns, helping lead the Eagles back to the Class L playoffs for the first time since 2015. Pace finishes his career with nine interceptions, 108 catches, over 1,700 yards, and 19 touchdowns. Opponents rarely succeeded when they decided to throw against Darianne's secondary, and Jackson Peters was a big reason why. The senior cornerback had three interceptions, batted nine passes down, and forced two more fumbles. Peters also did his damage on the other side of the ball, catching 35 passes for 667 yards and two more touchdowns. The Blue Wave star is also an All-American lacrosse player and will play lacrosse for the Naval Academy. Jack Mulligan may have made a name for himself on the defensive side of the ball for Newtown, but his play as the team's punter helped put that defense in great position all season. He averaged 38.3 yards a punt and put 13 of his punts inside the 20-yard line. His best performances of the season came when his team needed him the most. He had his season-long 68-yard punt against Shelton and in the Class Double L State Championship game, Mulligan punted nine times for 333 yards and added a long of 56 yards. Two of those punts ended up inside the 20-yard line. He also made 54 total tackles, had three sacks, and added two interceptions. <laughs>